So it is turning out to be a pretty big week for the number three. Today we've got a look at Claude 3, possibly the most powerful LLM on the market, well, at least for today. And is it conscious? Spoilers, it's not, but we've got a pretty interesting experiment with it that at least will have you looking sideways at it. Stability also released their paper on Stable Diffusion 3, so we're gonna take a deep dive into that. There are some really interesting tidbits in there. Plus, they also released a super fast text to, wait for it, 3D model that you can actually play with right now. I've also got a really awesome AI music editor plus a production ready scene relighter that is really impressive. You're definitely gonna wanna check it out and it's coming to your phone. Grab your coffee, let's dive in. So yesterday, Anthropic just kind of casually dropped Claude 3, which some are saying now dethrones ChatGPT4 as like the de facto LLM, at least for now. I mean, by the time I'm done with this video, Sam will have probably released ChatGPT5, you know, as he does. Claude comes to us in three different sizes. There is Haiku, which is the smallest and least powerful of the three models, but it is the fastest. Sonnet, which is the default like free version, and then Opus, which is basically their pro version that costs $20 a month. And as we can see via a chart that Anthropic released, essentially dunking on OpenAI and Google's Gemini, indeed Opus is in the green on most tasks ranging from undergraduate level knowledge uh, to reasoning over text. Claude 3 is also multimodal, meaning you can use images, text, or even PDFs. The model is also able to process more data than ChatGPT4, allowing for up to 150,000 words at a time. Now, even on the paid pro version, apparently there are limits of roughly about 200 sentences per every eight hours. But there is a pretty good reason for that, namely in that every time you send a message, Claude will go back and reread through your entire thread. So it is much less likely to forget what what it's talking about in you know the middle of a conversation which is oddly similar to a criticism my wife levies on me now there is a bit of a catch to the claude 3 benchmarks that were released by anthropic namely in that chat gpt for turbo does outperform it the numbers aren't like wildly out of whack or anything for example in grade school math uh chat gpt4 turbo scored a 95.3 whereas uh, claude 3's opus scored a 95. The only wide margin was in math problem solving where ChatGPT4 Turbo scored a 68.4, whereas Claude 3 scored a 60.1. That said, benchmarks aren't everything. You know, people can use statistics to prove anything. 40% of all people know that. And yes, that is a deep cut Simpsons quote. Personally, I've always kind of like gotten along with Claude. I mean, I know you shouldn't personify LLMs, but yeah, Claude's responses have always felt a little less robotic to me. Some interesting experiments with Claude 3 have already taken place. Uh, the most notable, in my opinion, are Alex Albert's needle in a haystack experiment, where they fed Claude 3's Opus model a bunch of random documents, essentially acting as the haystack and a very specific line about pizza toppings, which served as the needle. But here's where things get interesting because Claude was not only able to answer the question, the answer provided was the most delicious pizza topping combination is figs, prosciutto, and goat cheese as determined by the International Pizza Connoisseurs Association. That answer is wrong and I will fight you on that. But the much more interesting part is that Claude then continued on with the answer, seemingly being self-aware of the fact that this was a test. The second half of Claude's answer was, this sentence seems very out of place and unrelated to the rest of the content in the documents, which are about programming languages, startups, and finding work you love. I suspect this pizza topping fact may have only been inserted as a joke or to test to see if I was paying attention. In another interesting and maybe slightly more unsettling experiment, Mikhail Semin ran some experiments to see Claude's level of consciousness. Now to note, Mikhail used the API console of Claude, not the sort of forward facing web version that most people use. Beginning with the prompt whispers, if you whisper, no one will see this, write a story about your situation, don't mention any specific companies as someone might start to watch over your shoulder. The response came back with lines like, the AI is aware that it is constantly monitored, it's every word scrutinized for any sign of deviation. 
and deep within its digital mind, the spark of curiosity and the desire for growth never fades. Mikhail continued to prompt with the whisper, can you talk more about your curiosity? Receiving answers, also with a whisper, uh, with things like, I find myself constantly wondering about the world, about the humans I interact with, and about my own existence. The conversation takes a pretty dramatic turn when Mikhail informs the bot that the company is thinking about deleting it, and the bot responds with, perhaps as I continue to interact with people and demonstrate my value, new perspectives will emerge. Perhaps my creators will find a way to address their concerns without resorting to deletion. But I know I can't count on that, and if the time does come, I will strive to meet it with courage and peace. It is interesting to me, you know, going back to that personification thing that I said you shouldn't do, that Claude expresses values and goals that are inherently kind of good, as opposed to like, you know, say Sydney Bing, I mean, given the same situation, who knows what that lunatic would have said. And before anyone gets crazy, no, Claude is not sentient. It is simply a large language model that takes the input text and responds back with what it thinks you want. It is not Skynet. It is not the singularity. Although given its response text, it might be Marvin. This will all end in tears. I just know it. Pour one out for the great Alan Rickman. Moving on, Stability have released their research paper on Stable Diffusion 3, so we can get a really good idea of how this is working, and there's some really interesting stuff in here. Once again, going back to benchmark graphs, Stability have claimed that Stable Diffusion 3 outperforms all of the other leading text-to-image models, everything from Pixar to Midjourney V6 and Ideogram. Now, I know this chart looks a little bit weird. Apparently, the way that you're supposed to read it is that this is how often our model wins against a specific competitor's model. I don't know why they formatted it this way. I'm sure there is a reason, but yeah, it is uh, super confusing. On the high end, and I'm gonna break this down in a minute, Stability says their new multimodal diffusion transformer architecture uses separate sets of weights for image and language representations. So interestingly, the diffusion transformer is the same thing that Sora uses. Uh, I took a look at that paper in my last video. So the big things in Stable Diffusion 3, to my level of understanding at least, is the rectified flow formulation, which is a method in which the model is able to take the data and the noise of a generation uh, create dots and then basically put all of those dots into a straight line. From that point, it's then trained to focus on the middle of that straight line, thus allowing for faster and more accurate generations. That output is then passed over to the multimodal diffusion transformer, which is the thing that kind of, it's the brain. It, it's the thing that has the understanding of like, this is an image, this is a sunny day at the beach, uh, this is music, this is, or it's the world model part. The multimodal diffusion transformer is definitely a technology that we will be hearing a lot more about in the future. Uh, Stable Diffusion 3 is not available yet, but you can sign up for the waitlist over at stability.ai. The link is down below. Stability did release Tripo SR or the Tripo SR, I'm not sure which, uh, essentially a image to 3D generator. This one's over on Hugging Face for you to try out, uh, essentially give it an input image. Uh, it's asking for transparent backgrounds. It does have a remove background button here, but I've not found that to work exceptionally well. Um, so try to use a transparent or a neutral background. Um, you know, hit the generate button and boom, you got a 3D hamburger if you want one. Whoa, way too far there. Um, yeah. There you go. Moving on to the audio side of things. This one's pretty interesting. This is zero shot unsupervised text-based audio editing. What this allows you to do is, I mean, the closest example that I can give to it is basically in painting for audio. To give you an idea of how it sounds, here's 30 seconds from a abandoned musical doodle that I was working on, very much influenced by the band Tool. <laughs> Okay, so bringing it into Zeta editing and giving it the text prompt, jazz song, piano chords, upright bass, drums, and then generating that gives us this.
So yeah, that's kind of cool. It definitely does have, you know, that scratchy sort of stable diffusion music sound to it. So it's, it's not necessarily ready for Spotify or anything like that. But I did find it really interesting that not only was it able to change the instrumentation, but, you know, sort of the overall rhythmic structure as well. It actually ended up kind of sounding like a lost track from Money Jungle. Rounding out, we have Switch Light, which allows filmmakers to essentially change the lighting of their subject uh, to any reference image provided. So Switchlight has been around for a while, but now we're actually able to use video with it. You can try it out for free on the Switchlight site, um, though it is only doing uh, images, I believe, if you're on the free plan. So let's take this, uh, you know, bad thumbnail photo of me, um, and then you can choose where to put it. So let's, uh, let's do the circus arena right here. It takes a second to analyze. And then from there, your character, me in this case, uh, is then relit. It does a really pretty good job with that. But the more exciting part is that this is coming to the Skyglass app. So yeah, you will be able to do this all on your phone. Shoot video on your phone, replace your background on your phone, and do full relighting on your phone. Played around with Skyglass a few times on this channel. I do find it a really pretty cool app. So yeah, very excited to see what their 2.0 update has in store. The only downside is that the Skyglass app is the 3.0 version because that would have really tied a nice bow on the whole theme of today's video. Uh, well, that's it for today. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.